Hey guys, my name is Crystal Lisa. Thank you so much for dropping by. Be sure to subscribe for more great content. Today's video is not my regular type of content, but it's something I've really been feeling the need to do. So I thought I would sit down and just like get it done, get it over with. A couple of people have requested it because I've mentioned it in a few other videos. So if this is helpful to someone out there, I really, really, really hope it is because we're going to be discussing my real numbers budget for the month of June and just seeing how I basically keep my costs as low as possible especially like the monthly regular fixed recurring one so yeah if you want to see how i budget how i basically live a very minimalist frugal life in my finances and not like in my housing situation then just keep watching <laughs> So I have already tried to shoot this video and it was an hour and a half long so we're not going to do that again. I literally have notes. I have my laptop right in front of me and I, I have detailed notes of exactly how I'm going to tackle this video so that it's not too long. So let's just jump right in. First thing I'm going to say is that discovering Dave Ramsey changed my life so completely because back then I was like playing around with like my finances and I hadn't really thought them through and then like I found him and a lot of people find him abrasive so even as you're going to check out his content just be prepared for that but for me it really helps me get out of the spending mindset when i would literally imagine him yelling at me like you're broke like i want to do this i have the money for it in my pocket but there are things that still need to be paid so i am broke right so that really really helped me and what i learned from him is that a budget is permission to spend it's not like something that locks you up so if you want to spend something just add it to your budget most people are afraid of creating a budget because they feel too constrained by it but then it's like it's your budget so if you want to <laughs> fatten it up a bit like go right ahead right so a couple of things i wanted to answer before i jump like right into my budget and like my actual real number expenses for this upcoming month is number one why do i budget budgeting is basically telling your money where to go versus like wondering where it went it's like if i leave the house with a thousand bob and i come back home with 300 bob and i cannot for the life of me account where the 700 went like maybe um 100 bob of it was for transport and then i bought like lunch somewhere and then i have no idea where the rest of it went that like bothers me because that kind of wastage is how you end up at the end of the month with no money whatsoever and the first time i did a budget i literally felt like i got a raise like the next day i was so excited to like get back to work and like like show up you know because because I was like, before my budget, I felt like I was being underpaid and like taken advantage of and I was like salty with everyone, you know. But then after my budget, once I sat down and actually wrote out the things that are fixed must have expenses versus the things that are variable and can be cut out, I realized that I had so much wiggle room in my actual budget and everything else that got wasted like me being broke at the end of the month was entirely my fault and that was a really important lesson for me to learn so that is why i budget because i want to tell every single one of my shillings where they need to go also the sun has decided not to go away in this video so hopefully it doesn't go away at some point and change the lighting but just like bear with me it's literally right here so that's fun um the type of budget that i use so i use a zero based budget that means every single shilling in my hands basically has a job whether the job is to go to savings or the job is to go to be put aside or the job is to be spent every single coin has a, a, an assignment basically and you're going to see more of that in my actual budget so my favorite app for tracking my spending and like my budgeting is one called spendy so i will be showing you exactly how i build a budget in it i have tried different ones like i even tried a locally made one but then for some reason it just didn't feel as seamless and like as organic for me and my lifestyle as spendy is yes i am using the most expensive premium package and even for that, I literally pay 1600 shillings per year, not even per month, per year. So it's definitely worth paying for and it's something that I recommend 100%. So I'm going to be showing you exactly how I build up my budget in it. So... I will just mention right now before we get into the budget that I will not be talking about my actual salary. I just don't think my income is necessary for you to understand my budgeting. So I'm going to be talking about my actual expenses and the actual things that are going out, but I'm not going to be talking about anything that is coming in. So I won't be talking about my salary. And obviously, hand in hand, I very strongly believe in tithing. So if I talk about my tithe, you'll know what it's 10% of. So it's just not going to happen. Just <laughs> not talking about salary, not going to talk about income. 
Now I'm going to talk about savings just because I don't think you need an actual number to understand that you need to save. So I just don't think those types of things are necessary, but we will be talking everything in detail about the expense side of my budget. So what I have decided to do for this video, because in my last video, I tried to like get around it by not having a salary. Like the last time I tried to shoot this video and it didn't make any sense because the numbers are just like sort of floating in the air. So it is difficult to like really get into the nitty gritty. So for this video, I think a fair salary assumption for me will be 50,000. That is not what I earn. I'm not going to say if it's more or less. I'm just going to say in this particular budget, we're going to pretend that I earn 50,000 and then we're going to deduct my actual real time expenses from that and see what we can save and what we can invest and what we can like, you know, just basically how to organize a budget. Um, let me know if that's a reasonable salary for you, because I'm curious to see if you would prefer for me to do a fake salary based on like 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, 70,000 plus 70,000, a million shillings a month. I mean, Whatever works for you is fine by me. Um, but yeah, we'll just get into those details once I start the budget. So I have the screen record on on my phone and I am recording my audio here. So hopefully it's not jumping around too much. If it is, again, just, just bear with me. Today is a bit of a different type of video. So I'm going to open up Spendy and I've already archived my usual budget. So here you can see them. I have... Um, site on money market fund because i do use that as my savings account just because i don't believe in putting my money in a savings account where i'm punished for having an emergency and needing to withdraw it like that doesn't make any sense to me so i use a money market fund as my savings account because the day that i need cash and i need it in a hurry it pays out immediately so it's not something that i have to wait days to access which is the convenience of it and also it takes discipline which is again takes me back to dave ramsey and him yelling at me you're broke so even though i have the money in the money market fund i know not to touch it because I have Dame Ramsey in my head screaming, you're broke, you're broke, you're broke, don't touch it. And it makes me feel better. It actually works for me, you know? So, um, I have a whole, a whole bunch of old, uh, wallets. Basically I use those as my budgets. They have a different system in Spendy, but this is how I use it. And this is how I find that it works best for me. So, um, yeah, we're just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna get started. So I'm going to add a cash wallet for this month. And I like to budget for the period between the end of this current month to the end of the next month because that's around the time that people get money in their pocket so i'm going to call this particular budget end of may just because we're still in may initial balance is going to be zero shillings because i prefer to start the budget on a clean slate like i could put initial balance whatever money is in my pocket but then once i get into doing the actual numbers inside the budget it's easy to forget that so i prefer to have it at zero um currency is kenyan shillings you can use whatever currency you prefer but obviously most of us are in kenya so easier to use kenyan shillings because you also pay for things in kenyan shillings so much easier categories categories are something you're going to have to work out yourself it comes with a far more basic list of categories than this so i call all my basic supermarket shopping naivas just just because I used to think they were the cheapest in the market, but my friend proved to me that Kafwar is actually the cheapest in the market. So I'm going to switch over to Kafwar and then switch that name over to Kafwar. So I have Naivas, I have Transportation, which is like when I use Matatus or even like Uber or something. I have Home. I have a whole bunch of them that I've had a lot of time to like refine. So some of them show up in all my budgets consistently and some of them show up once in a while. So I'm only going to show you the ones that are relevant to this particular budget as we create them. But also income, you can add as many any streams of income as you need to so that's something you're going to have to customize once you download the app but also i will mention that they have a free version that works just as well for me i found it a bit cumbersome to have all my months in one wallet which is what the free version does for you so i prefer to create half a million wallets for tracking each individual month separately so that's why i pay for an upgrade but you don't necessarily have to so categories 39 expenses 22 incomes another thing i will mention about categories really quickly is that some categories are both expenses and in Incomes because like for savings I have it both in expenses and incomes because when a saving is a negative like it's an expense is when it's coming out of my pocket but then if I need to draw from savings for something I do still want to keep track of that so I have it as a positive income into my wallet um, add new member the package that I'm on you can actually share your budget with people so end of may budget i literally again back to my list because i already have my budget set up i did it in the last video but then it was just way too long so i'm going to create a whole new budget with you right now again like i mentioned these are my real expenses real monthly costs so you'll get to see how i keep things as low as i am comfortable with in the different categories that i spend money in so we're gonna add in the fake salary step one for me is usually actual money so i prefer to add in whether i have um like a thousand bob left in my pocket from the previous month 
the 500 bob or something but this time i'm not going to add it in just to not confuse this budget so whatever money i have in my pocket i'm just going to forget about it and use it sort of as like extra buffer money for the next month so i'm not going to add the actual money category i'm just going to go straight into income salary we've decided to pretend that it's 50,000 shillings what i'm going to do is also pretend that i've been paid today so i'm literally shooting this video on the 25th of may and usually no one has been paid by this day but then i like to arrange my budget just so that when the money eventually does come in i just have i know exactly where it's going like i know exactly what it's been assigned to so there's no like thinking and deciding oh should i put it here should i put it there no like there's already a plan in place and it's easier to just follow it once i've had the the money put aside like i'm not thinking because i have money eating me in my pocket like i'm thinking because what do i need like i'm, I'm clearer in my head basically i hope that's <laughs> clear so um yes 25th of may i'm just going to add that as salary and then also you'll notice that i have put it under yesterday because i like to divide my days into different chunks so i might even go back and put it to the day before yesterday just so that i can see because i order my expenses in terms of priorities and if i put this as a future date they would all be grouped together but then if i put it on different days then it's easier for me to at a glance know which ones need to be paid which ones have already been taken care of and which ones like are still pending right so i'm also going to just turn off my internet because it's very very annoying when the app is trying to sync itself and i'm trying to add data so it's hanging so if it gives you that issue just turn off your data and then turn it back on and it will sync in the background so salary again like i said tithe is very very important to me and also i like to put my bills in like really bright colors just to make me happy when i'm going to look at them instead of like depressed and like money is leaving my hands you know so tithe five thousand shillings ten percent directly so i'm going to put this on the same day as my salary just so that i can know these are the most like crucial top of the line like right off the top um costs right so those two come in on the same day on the next day i'm going to put in my ads because i do run ads on instagram and on youtube but then i already checked and i don't have any bill for google ads this month but um on um, facebook i have like 400 and something bob so i'm just going to put 500 bob and then prepay the google ads one a thousand bob for next month I try to keep a slightly higher budget for this, but then because of Corona, things haven't really been approved on Google Ads, so I'm, I'm, I'm able to save money there, which is definitely a plus, but then it's a bit frustrating, you know? So, um, yes, so I'm going to order this again for yesterday because I do have more bills for today. So if I added bills tomorrow, it wouldn't show up in my budget the way I wanted to, so that's why I'm working like this. Um, this ads also, I like it to be one of the first things I do because before the money leaves my account into my M-Pesa, I do prefer to pay it because i swipe that like it has to be a visa payment so anything that has to be a visa payment you'd rather just leave it in the account rather than taking it out and then have to incur mpesa costs putting it back i hope that makes sense so so yeah we have earned fifty thousand in this budget and already down to forty three thousand. that's quite quite a jump but it's okay also i will mention that i do pay for everything with mpesa like i'm one of those people who hates using cash because i can't keep track of it but then with mpesa i can go back and say on the 19th of may at this time who did i pay where did my money go you know so it's easier for me to keep track of things like that so if you're like me and you also feel like when money just gets into your hands it like evaporates it like slips through your fingers then definitely try to stick to mpesa even with the cost it's worth it for you to be able to track everything that you're doing basically so this same day is when i pay for most of my costs and i pay them in order of importance so the next thing that i'm going to add is rent and you can see here it is in my categories so for my um house tour video i didn't mention how much i pay in rent just because i didn't want to but then for this budget video it's very relevant so i do pay fourteen thousand shillings in rent and i feel like for the house that i have it's a really good deal so my goal in life is literally to pay as little rent as possible while being as comfortable as possible so like i have colleagues who pay fifty thousand in rent and i'm just like are you serious that is so unnecessary so yeah i just feel like at my age i'm i'm a single girl i have no kids like i really don't need to be spending that much money on rent so yeah fourteen thousand definitely enough for me and also if you're looking for places to cut in your budget i would say look at your rent as the first thing because rent is usually the biggest expense in anyone's budget but then it's a thing that you can actually cut and still be comfortable while saving chunks and chunks of money every every month basically so yeah fourteen thousand that's that's the most expensive line item in my budget and you see just with that we've gone from forty three thousand to twenty nine thousand left in our pocket 
pocket. So that is a huge chunk of our money just disappeared like that. But for me, it's worth it because 14 is reasonable for where I am. Another very important one. This one isn't due until the 5th of the month. But then when I have the money, I prefer to just deduct it. So that when I'm done creating my budget, I know exactly how much money is for bills and exactly how much money is for me. So I'm going to put 2,000 shillings just because that's the general expense around here. This is for internet in case I haven't mentioned it. So um, my office pays for my internet. So I actually have a much bigger budget than that. But I'm putting 2,000 shillings just because that's a standard for this area. So I feel like if push came to shove, like I would be able to pay this amount, but then the office tops up for me, which I'm very grateful for. Again, a yesterday expense. Now for electricity, I try to stay a month ahead always. So I always have an extra thousand bob, like the unused messages in my KPLC, because what I've noticed with KPLC is that the day you desperately need it is the day that their systems can be down and it takes them like hours and hours to like send you your message. So I like to keep an unused token as a text message on my phone. So that the day that I need power, I top up and then I top up. <laughs> Does that make sense? So like I use the one that I've already bought and then I use the money that I have put aside for KPLC to buy another token. Electricity, I'm just going to put 2000 bob just because it's been a little bit cold lately and I've been using my heater a bit more often and it literally drinks up the electricity. So I'm going over and above because I use a thousand bob for electricity. Even with my gigantic fridge, I literally use like two and a half tokens per day. But then with the heater on for like six hours, it uses four units. So that is crazy, but I don't want to also be like, I'm going to go cold just to save a couple of units. It doesn't make sense. So a couple of things are a bit of a balancing act, but usually it's a thousand bob. This month I'm budgeting two thousand bob. So my Nivas budget, which needs to switch over to Car Four, is um this month I'm going to put two thousand bob. Usually I have it at five thousand shillings, but then I always end up going over budget. So now with Corona and everything, I'm realizing that I can do bulk shopping just like one time and then only be topping up as I need it. So I'm gonna add seven seventy four here just to indicate what I want to spend the two thousand shillings on. So seven. 74 is for milk because now I buy the box of milk. So 18 packets at 43 shillings. It's actually cheaper if you buy a box of milk than if you buy the single packets in the supermarket, not in the wholesale. So <laughs> pro tip for you. But um, yeah, I need to top up one more box of milk because I have a backup box and I still have a few sachets left here. So I need to add that. And then I'm going to have a bit more room in my budget in case there are more things that come up. So yeah, I'm going to leave that there. 2000 shillings that's fair and then also another thing i wouldn't be talking about in this video is like sinking funds or emergency funds those are very important topics in and of themselves so i wouldn't do them justice in this video but then really briefly a sinking fund is like a real world example i know that in december i'll have to pay car insurance for next year so that's 16000 shillings so if i'm starting to plan this in january that means that i divide that 16000 shillings by the 12 months that i have to come up with it basically and i put that amount aside every single month in preparation for that bill that i know is coming up but is not due yet right so the way this would work with nivus is that since i know at least for the near future i will be spending 2000 bob per month just because i am fully stocked up and my usual budget is 5000 bob i can be taking 3000 bob from that usual budget and putting it aside so that in like three four months when i do need to go back and stock up i already have that money saved versus having to look for that money in the month that I need it. I hope that makes sense. If you want to learn more about sinking funds, emergency funds, lifestyle, creep, all of those things, just let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to do more of these videos. Hopefully this one is actually helpful to someone. So yeah, I'm not just showing you my numbers for no reason. On the same day as Nivas, because I so rarely leave the house, like I try to leave the house as little as possible, literally. So when I do leave the house, I try to do as much as I possibly can in the same day. So the same day as Nivas or now Kafor, I will also do fresh groceries and like meat groceries. So I'm going to put meat groceries first because that city market in town, I always go there because I feel like not only are they cheaper, but then they also have like fresh things. So I prefer to go directly there. And I usually spend 1500 a month on this. But then because I've already again gone and stocked up. So I know for the next two, three months, I'm not going to need to buy any meat at all because it was like either spend 1500 a month as usual and like go there every few weeks or get everything I need, stock up on my fridge and like freeze it and like not have to go out and put myself at risk of Corona. So I just prefer to like go ahead and like use three months budget to like stock up on all the meat I could need and then um, forget about it. So I'm just going to have a negative one there because I do prefer to have it in my budget, even though I'm not actually spending money on it. So 
meat groceries i'm gonna do that fresh groceries i figured out a system that actually means that i'm gonna eat greens so i'm gonna put a thousand bob over there because i'm gonna buy greens but i'm gonna ask someone to buy greens and then come to my house and cut them because cutting greens is like the bane of my existence and i realized for the past like two three months i haven't eaten greens just because i don't want to cut them so yeah this this works for me and i'm willing to put a thousand bob a month to that so that's usually my budget anyway but because i have already stocked up on like fruits and vegetables and whatever now this thousand is just for specific specifically green also if i need more from that category i can always pull it out from naiva so this is how those little buffers work so fuel is my next category and with the current fuel prices i'm really enjoying myself because i can actually go to the pump to like the attendant and be like put full tank and then it turns out to be a thousand bob and they're looking at me like okay this is weird so yeah usually what happens is a few months ago i did set aside a budget to like bring my fuel tank from like the last two bars to like full tank and then i've just been maintaining it there so my monthly fuel budget is usually between 800 to 1500 shillings but then i keep it at full tank so as soon as it goes down one bar i fuel it up because i realize that with the top bar i get 58 to 68 kilometers literally i take pictures of my dashboard and keep track so i get 58 to 68 kilometers but then with the second bar i get 48 and it just gets worse from there so it's like 48 and then 36 i think for the third one so i realized it's better and actually a lot more cost effective for me to just fuel up whenever it goes down to the second bar so i always keep it at the first bar so um this last month i ended up leaving the house like a few days ago so i decided to fuel then instead of waiting and like continuing to go down in bars so my fuel cost for this past month was actually 11.50 and i was at full tank from two bars down so yeah it's actually really really cost effective so instead of punishing myself for that and saying that i'm gonna pay myself back from my next income i'm just going to have it as one or maybe I'm going to put 500 bob as a little buffer just in case it goes down again. Because now fuel is at 83 bob. 83 bob. The last time I put full tank, like, from a low, like, from many bars up, it was 112. So 83 bob is amazing. I think we're back to the point where one bar cost me 500 bob. So I think 500 bob as a buffer for it is a fair amount. So I'm just going to leave that there. Again, that's going to be for yesterday. Next is personal spend money. Now, this can be a bit of a controversial category just because with Dave Ramsey, like when you're paying off your debt and depending on where you are in your baby steps he has seven baby steps that are very very effective i kid you not this is what got my financial plan like streamlined so i definitely definitely recommend checking him out but depending on where you are you're not really supposed to have a personal category but then i find that sometimes i'm like out and about doing things for the whole day and i forget to eat and then i know that by the time i come home and i cook something it just it will take too much time so i decided to pick up like kfc or chicken in or go get cake city cake so i have have a bit of money in my personal category and then whenever i need to buff up a different category i just take from there so a thousand bob in my like personal spend fun money category is not too bad you know so i'm just gonna have that be there and this basically brings us to the end of my monthly budget i feel like it's very important for everyone in this world to be able to afford themselves so this type of budget this type of somewhat restrained budget but it's not really i don't feel like i'm living frugally when i'm only spending this amount of money because we're not going to include the tithe that i've listed here in my general budget just because that's not my real number so it's not really going to contribute towards a cost so why i like this app is because it's totaled it up right there for me so 24,000 shillings is what I need to get through the month of June basically end of May to end of June and that's a really fair affordable number considering 14,000 of that is my rent so if ever things get thick and like I need to save money immediately step one moving to a cheaper house I keep seeing so many youtubers doing like bed sitter and one bedroom reviews for like 7,000 I think I think I've even seen as low as like 6,000 to 7,500 for a bed sitter which is crazy so if I ever wanted to remove 8,000 shillings from my budget i would just immediately move to one of those places and the thing about like lifestyle creep which is why i'm not going to talk about it in this video because it's such a wide topic in itself because lifestyle creep means that even when i go down in my lifestyle that means i have to sell my couch because it won't fit in a bed sitter i have to sell a few other things so that puts more money in my pocket whereas if i was to go up from like an eight thousand bob place to like when i moved from my last place i was paying ten thousand shillings for a bed sitter now i'm paying fourteen thousand shillings for a one bedroom so i think it's a very good deal right Right? but then when i moved here i had to buy a couch i bought a bigger fridge i bought this i bought that i needed more curtains for the house like it's different things that increase the overall cost of living versus my cost of living when i was in a smaller place so that is lifestyle creep in a nutshell but if you want a bigger video about that we can definitely definitely
definitely discuss it. Um, yeah, so 24,000 shillings is what it will take me to get through the next month successfully. And I'm really, really happy with that number. So this is my idea of a very frugal number because you can see even in this overall budget after I have paid my tithe with all the very reasonable prices that I have in my budget I still am able to save 21,000 shillings if I remove the meat groceries it would be a round number I would be able to save 21,000 shillings 21,000 shillings a month for 12 months is a lot of money 252,000 shillings in one year just making 50,000 shillings because you're being smart and frugal and minimalist with your finances and you see that's a lifestyle you can afford for yourself so you don't need a boyfriend to like support you you're not asking people for fair to go places like i mean honestly i feel like this is a really really fair budget and if you are making something in this price range or even if you're making forty thousand shillings that means you're able to save ten thousand shillings of your income though then i would definitely look into living maybe somewhere cheaper in rent because the last thing you want to do is spend all your money in rent and like be house poor it doesn't make sense so one of the reasons i love this budgeting app is because it does give you this overview so you can actually see what percentages of your income you're using in different categories if this was 40% of your overall income like if this was like I was spending 24 25,000 shillings on rent and then like surviving off the rest that would make absolutely no sense so the goal is to get your general rent expense to be 10% of your income so based on my calculations if they're not wrong I'm spending 28% of my 50,000 shilling income on rent which puts me right around the 30% that's recommended so it is doable and I can still save comfortably from this amount if I'm very very disciplined but then I still feel like that's a bit too much. Like the closer you can get to 10% of your income on rent, the better. But then again, going back to lifestyle inflation is that the day that I start making a million shillings a month, it doesn't mean I'll be willing to spend 100,000 on rent, right? So it's a larger conversation to be had. But I feel like based on your income, you need to be really realistic about where it is you can afford to live, why it is that you should spend the amount that you are spending on living, basically on like your largest monthly recurring fixed cost and how you can reduce it. So that's, that's a one thing I would say especially now during this corona period it's so important to reduce your costs as much as possible especially the ones that are going to be knocking on your door every single month if you can reduce those ones then everything else is negotiable right so 14,000 for me is fair 14,000 if you're making up to 40,000 shillings is doable but not really comfortable but anything less than that you definitely need to reassess your priorities in terms of rent so again I'm not going to be discussing savings in this video but one thing that I did want to mention is how I do my savings so I I try to build out my savings after I have decided how low my expenses can go. So it seems like for this month, based on my current situation, the lowest my expenses can go to is 24,000 because again, these are real world working numbers that I use. So based on that, um, you can see here in my archived uh, folders in my archived wallets, I do have one called the perfect month. So I actually have my perfect month set up and it's like in a dream month, this is what I would spend in total. And then this is what I would save. So based on this expense planner that we've just done here this budget um it says that i should be able in a perfect world to save twenty one thousand shillings right but then we all know that unexpected costs come up and things come up that you wouldn't have necessarily planned for so i'm just going to call that miscellaneous that's one of my categories here that I never use, so I never know where it is. Um, yeah, so just miscellaneous, and we're gonna have that show up on a different block, like from the rest of the bills, just so that I can know to differentiate them. Because I have already started spending from my miscellaneous budget. So since this is my real May and May budget, I'm going to show you the actual numbers. So I am spending about a thousand bob on like cables, just getting a new HDMI cable and getting an internet cable directly to connect to my TV because someone suggested I should try that from my last video, and just like little cables like that just it's it's actually adding up so a thousand bob on that and then there's a couple of things i needed from jumia so like i need more peppermint oil because i actually do feel like it's helping with the spiders so i've been using it quite a bit lately and i want to just stock up because i feel like there's a good deal on it for like 700 shillings and then there's a couple of other things that i've also ordered so that adds up to about 2000 shillings so this is a real budget, so I am going to include it here. And I'm just going to say I've spent, I've already spent 3,000 shillings on miscellaneous things. Now, in this case, I also have like, there's some roses that I really want to get because they're real fresh roses, but then they've been treated to last for like years and years without me needing to buy more of them. But then they're like 5,000 shillings. So it's like, is that necessary this month? No, especially with Corona, we want to throw as much as we can into savings and building an emergency fund and just feeling a bit more secure, especially like apparently for women, money 
money is more security than like for showing off which it is for men so yeah for me i prefer to be a bit more secure in my finances so in a perfect world i would have saved 21000 shillings but in this world i'm saving 18000 shillings and i feel like just for the sake of a round number because you've already seen that my meat groceries category is here i'm just going to delete that just so we can have a round number because it's not part of my budget this month and you can't have a line item and have it at zero unfortunately with this budgeting app so yeah so 18,000 shillings is still the money that I have left to me. And this is why I prefer, even though rent isn't due today, like today is the 25th, rent is due on 5th. I have like 11 days before I need to pay it. But then I'm still going to pay today just because I want to get that out of the way and know that every single coin that I have in my hands is mine. But as I mentioned, I do a zero-based budget. So every single coin, including this 18,000, needs to get an assignment. Not that it needs to be used like spent but then it needs to go somewhere i need to know exactly where it's going to like actively choose that for myself so what i'm going to do is set aside an amount based on this budget um for savings so i'm going to take savings going out of my pocket that's money market fund savings and i'm going to say ten thousand shillings minimum so we can say minimum savings for this month and every month will be ten thousand shillings and then i give myself a bit of wiggle room to like play with the rest so in a good month i'll be able to throw five thousand shillings more maybe ten thousand shillings more towards that savings goal but then in a bad month i'll be able to like pull out whatever i need from it right so ten thousand shillings goes into savings again in a different block of days just so that i can see like all my total costs are twenty four thousand shillings obviously that's minus tithe because that's that's a given <laughs> that's a given so um yeah twenty four thousand shillings is what i need to be able to run my life smoothly and then ten thousand shillings automatically goes to savings so this is exactly why it's so important for me to have a budget because i know that as soon as the money hits my hand i'm not thinking of what to do with it when i was clear and i had time and there was no pressure and there was no one like calling me like oh could you send me this or could you send me that i already knew exactly where my money was supposed to go so as soon as it hits my hand i can just throw ten thousand to, to savings immediately i know that i'll still be sorted and i'll still have some wiggle room in case other things come up so like for me a real and practical budget for this month i'm also going to be sending five thousand bob just to my grandparents because i feel like it's it's important that we don't forget them like we're all going through this economic crisis so if i am able to this month i'm able to next month i'm not but then the other month i'm able to i'll figure out how to work it into my budget so you see it also depends on your priorities i could either buy flowers or i could send them the money and i'd rather just send them the money and then next month figure out the flowers or the other month or the month after that and maybe even start a sinking fund for those flowers who knows so i'm just going to have that in the gift category have it be on the same day as the miscellaneous things just so i can know that's a completely different category and then we have three thousand shillings left based on this fifty thousand shilling budget now now, this 3,000 shillings can also go into the money market fund just to act as a buffer savings account so that I can know like based on this budget if this is the first time that I'm budgeting and saving I have 10,000 shillings that I cannot touch 10,000 shillings that is like my base minimum savings amount there and then in case I need something else during the month I have 300 bob to draw from or I have my personal spend money right so in case like something I've been looking for like I can show you actually I have been looking for a glass dish for my larger oven. <laughs> Again, lifestyle creep. If I hadn't gotten a bigger oven, I would need a bigger dish, right? But then I've been looking for an oven safe dish for a while. And I was in Carrefour the other day and I'd already paid for parking. So like, there's a bit more value there than having to say like, let me go and come back, right? So this is about a thousand bob and I decided to pick it up because I have been looking and I've been looking online and they're like 2000 bob, two five, which is crazy. So yeah, that was important to me. So if little things like that come up, I can pull from this 3000 bob but then the goal generally is to leave it there and forget about it and then like top up to it next month I hope that makes sense. So now the app is showing my total wealth is zero and my yearly cash flow is zero. That means I have a zero based budget. Every single shilling that has come into my hands has been given an assignment, has been told where to go, has been spent consciously and by choice and it didn't just happen to me. So I wouldn't just come home and be like, I had 5,000 shillings when I left the house. Where the hell did it go? Yes, I bought this one shoe somewhere, fine. But then like where else did it go? You know, so yeah, a zero based budget is very important. But one thing that I will show you, I'll make this a future 
future costs just so that you can see how it handles future expenses so it comes up here as scheduled so i'll know that i have scheduled um three thousand shillings to put away at the end of my payments period so like this budget is from the 25th is from the 23rd right but i haven't been paid on the 23rd so as the money is coming in i will fix the dates that i'm able to pay these things on and i try to pay all of these like expenses on the same day just so they can show up on the same day and then um the other things that come up definitely get slotted in there but then like for scheduled expenses i like it because it shows me even though i have three thousand bob in my wallet today i still have bills to pay in the future so if maybe that scheduled expense was two thousand bob then it would show me that i only have 1000 bob that's spendable in my pocket versus the 2000 bob that needs to go somewhere so that's why i really like this app it shows me my total two-day wealth which is 3000 bob but then it also shows me my yearly cash flow which is 1000 bob extra in my pocket so if i want to go nuts i have a thousand bob to go nuts with basically <laughs> i hope that's clear okay so i know this video is already much much longer than i had hoped it would be but i feel like all this information is very important and i have a list now so it's more concise than the previous one i'm shooting so hopefully hopefully all of this is helpful to you but obviously there will be timestamps in this video as we go along just to make sure you can jump straight to whatever is most useful to you right now so um one thing that i will mention is not in this cost but is in a sinking fund sort of part of my emergency fund conversation is like car expenses because the other day my alternator failed and the replacing an alternator first of all is like seven thousand shillings and then it needed other work on it plus labor and ended up being twelve thousand shillings just to fix the car unexpectedly so that's definitely something you need to have factored into your emergency fund as you put it aside so that you can be able to draw money from that so even though it's not a regular monthly expense that i need to like account for it is still something i need to have on my mind so also other costs that i do not have that you may have <laughs> other costs i will not have for the foreseeable future are like um kids right i have no kids i have no pets i have nothing else to look after other than myself which again is why i can't keep my costs so low so i would say take advantage of that period of life as long as you possibly can also if you can live at home i get that not everyone has like the privilege of being able to go and live under someone else's roof at no cost but if you can definitely take advantage of it because imagine if i was saving the twenty thousand out of this budget that i could potentially save plus fourteen thousand on top of that thirty four thousand a month every month for like a year is a lot of money right so if you're able to live at home definitely do it not all of us are able to for whatever reason but if you can do so another cost i keep seeing like i keep seeing different adverts for this is car payments so like um buy this car with a down payment of seventy thousand, and then only pay forty thousand a month for like the next six years that is crazy to me but i get that some people do have those in their um budget and also with that i'm going to mention any type of debt because following dave ramsey helped me get debt free so that's why debt is its own conversation a different video a different topic let me know if you want me to actually address it in a video like how i got out of debt and how you can possibly structure your budget to like get you out of debt but basically any sort of debt payments i do not have them i'm very grateful for that um credit card payments again part of debt i don't have any of that in my life so these are some of the categories you might want to add to your budget in case you are sort of handling these things um gym again i have a bike here one-time costs are more my thing i try to avoid recurring payments so anything that's going to be monthly taking money out of my account like an unnecessary monthly responsibility i minimize those as much as i possibly can so gym out of the window for me never ever um not well, not never ever but like unless it's a pool payment and even for the pool like the pool that i go to i prepaid that for the entire month so i paid 1800 for one month versus like 200 bob every time i came in which would be more expensive so any way that i can cost save and like pay everything up front the better but then like now pools are closed because of corona so i can't even use that 1800 but then it's already paid for whenever the pool reopens i know it's already sorted um something like netflix again i just download everything and watch it so i'm not encouraging you to be illegal i'm just saying 1500 out of my pocket every single month when i only have twenty thousand buffer to save not gonna happen um transport again so like i drive so if you're using a matatu or uber or whatever you would want to include that into your costs water and garbage for me those things are handled as part of my rent so i'm very grateful for that i get free water basically and i have for every place that i've lived so i mean that's a plus but then if you have to pay for water and garbage separately that's definitely something you want to list in your budget literally everything that comes out of your pocket you need to list it in your budget so for me miscellaneous includes things like parking things like when someone delivers something and i give them a 50 bob that's miscellaneous things like generosity if someone like 
need something and I can provide it. That is part of all of that. So a budget isn't meant to restrict you and like prevent you from being able to be generous and kind and like give back to your community. It's just meant to give you a number to see how much you can give without putting yourself at like unnecessary strain. You know, it's like within an airplane, they say put on your mask before you put on someone else's mask. So if you're just giving, 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 and then you realize you spent your rent money, then you see you're not going to be able to give quite so joyfully next time so it just prevents you from putting yourself into an awkward situation you know yeah so things like birthdays people that i know who just wish each other and keep it moving so it's fine um going out i don't drink so if you do drink just have it as a line in your budget you need 3,000 shillings for alcohol, that is just such a waste of money to me. But then I get that it's a social activity for a lot of people, so I'm not going to begrudge you that. So if you do need to have it, have it as a line in your budget, just reduce it, and then the number that you can save maximum is 17,000 shillings, and learn to live with that. Or learn to reduce it, or learn to increase your income so that you're not feeling it as much, you know? So there are different ways that you can tackle it. Things like house help, now that's part of my 1,000 Bob Fresh groceries, because the lady who's going to be buying them will be cutting them, so that's as much house helping as I need because i bought a vacuum to avoid having to need to call someone regularly into my house and then also bought a washing machine so with those two things i am pretty much sorted i wash my dishes these days i'm like staying on top of it so i'm very proud of that but then like cutting groceries is like the last hurdle that i need to get over and yeah that one it's already in my budget already sorted so yeah so i'm gonna end this video here before it becomes excessively long just because it's already long enough and i'm really sorry i couldn't make this any shorter but then everything that i've mentioned in this video i genuinely feel is very very important for you to have some degree of understanding of as you are taking control of your financial journey so with corona happening this should definitely put you on the right path for it but then even after corona this is definitely a lesson that you can learn from this that carries you through the rest of your life so hopefully this video was helpful I would love to sit down with like one of your budgets and I like go through it on camera. I wouldn't mention the person, obviously. But then if you want me to help you streamline your finances and like get your monies together and like help you figure out how to trim the fat, basically, let me know because I would love, 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 love to do that. Like I'm always so curious about other people's lives and like how they're living it. So I would be very interested in like helping you out. So email me. I'll leave my email in the description down below. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. Yes, I studied finance. I have a bit more of an understanding about how all of these things work but then i'm not a financial advisor so i'm not giving you financial advice i'm just giving you practical life advice based on like what's on the ground you know like what do we have what do we need to spend on what responsibilities do we have where can we cut them also let me know what salary range is going to be preferred for me to be using for like future videos in case i do future videos so if you do want me to come back in at the end of june and check in and see how well we did for this month because i want to keep my costs as low as humanly possible so if you want to actually see what my practical monthly budget looked like by the end of the month let me know i would love to come back and do a video like that like where we just check in and also set up july's budget you know yeah so also let me know what fake salary would actually work best for you guys for you to feel a bit more relating to this video because i feel like if i come here and i say i make two million shillings a month but i only spend twenty three thousand shillings it will sound a little bit crazy but then again i'm not really comfortable talking about my income and like sources of income <laughs> on the internet that's just not necessary once i get to like patricia bright level of rich maybe we'll talk about investments but until then i'm not selling you any investment anything i'm just telling you how i keep my costs as low as possible so that i can meet my goals which is like getting out of debt having an emergency fund having savings having investments sorting out my future basically so yeah i'm gonna end this video here it's already way 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 too long so i'm gonna say goodbye thank you so much for watching thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe down below leave me comments and i will see you in my next video